Welcome to the user video for the Hylotherm Clinic device. Um, Hylotherm is a temperature controlled treatment which is used to reduce pain, swelling and bruising following either surgery or injury. Um, this video is designed for medical professionals who are using Hylotherm with patients in hospital. Um, many of the Hylotherm Clinic devices are supplied on the trolley. Yours may or may not be, um, but if, if it is, please make sure to look out for this laminate. Um, it has got step-by-step -step user instructions on it, but there is also troubleshooting information. So all of the things that I cover in the video today are also on the laminated sheet. So please do look out for that, um, particularly in the trolley or if your device is on a trolley. So the machines contain um, two litres of either sterile or distilled water. Um, that water is then cooled to a specific temperature and then pumped around a cuff which is fitted to the part of the face or body that is needing treatment. The temperature range on the machine um, is between 10 and either 35 or 38 degrees C depending on the model of device that you have. Obviously 10 degrees being the colder of those temperatures. So all of the recommended temperatures are listed on the front of the device. So there is a little chart on the front of each of the Hylotherm Clinic devices which shows the recommended temperatures for each part of the face or body. So for um, facial surgery, be it cosmetic or jaw surgery, we would normally recommend a temperature range of between 16 and 19 degrees. And for the knee or the foot and ankle, which is an extremity, we would recommend between 15 and 18 degrees C. It's worth bearing in mind that for orthopaedic surgery in particular, there is often thicker bandaging, uh, especially immediately post-op. And if that is the case, you may want to reduce that temperature down below 15 degrees. So um, you may want to take it down to say 12 degrees, um, but you will find if you go as low as 10 or 11 degrees, you may start to get condensation. So there will be moisture on both the cuff and the tubing, which will be a result of um, just the, the difference in temperature between the cuff and the temperature of the patient or the environmental temperature. So if that happens, then you just need to increase that temperature slightly. The main thing to remember is that hylotherm is not a ice based treatment. We are not trying to replicate ice. Um, it is temperature controlled and it's designed to be used safely for long periods of time. So it's very important that you work with the temperature range. You may find that older patients are happier at the higher temperature ranges. So um, say 18, 19 for facial surgery or 17, 18 for knee surgery. And um, even cooling at those temperatures, I would encourage you to try feeling um, the, the treatment at 17, 18 degrees. Most people are surprised at how cold that is, particularly when it's applied for long periods of time. So it's not like ice and you are not trying to go as cold as possible. You're finding the right temperature for your patient to use comfortably for long periods of time. So um, I'm just gonna turn the device on now. So when you first turn the device on, you can see that there are um, two different temperatures listed on the display. So there is an actual temperature and a nominal temperature. So the only thing that you can adjust is the nominal temperature. And you do that just by increasing and decreasing the temperature using the arrows. Obviously it won't work outside the, um, the overall range of 10 or either 35 or 38 degrees. So to adjust the temperature, you can just increase or decrease using the arrows. Um, and then you can also start and stop the water flow. That's the other thing that's available on the display. Um, it's worth bearing in mind um, that when you first turn the device on, quite often the actual temperature will be significantly higher and it will take some time to cool the water inside the machine and get it to the temperature that you have set, get it to the nominal temperature that you have set. Um, if the temperature just isn't reducing down at all or it's been at temperature and then suddenly it's not at temperature, the first thing you need to check is these blue panels on the side. So there's blue panels on the side of the device 
and the device needs to draw air in and push air out in order to cool effectively. So if anything is blocking these blue panels, if it's pushed up against a wall um, or there's something been placed um, in front of that blue panel, um, then the device just won't be able to cool properly. So any issues to do with the actual temperature, the first thing to check is that these blue panels are clear and there's plenty of ventilation around the device. Um, one of the other things that can impact on the actual temperature is the environmental temperature. So um, if the room is particularly hot, um, that will impact on the device's ability to cool. So we recommend a room temperature of 23 degrees or below. Um, anything above that, it can start to impact on how the device um, is able to cool, particularly if you are targeting those lowest temperatures, such as 12, 13 degrees. So you can see on the front of the machine, there's a water level indicator. You've got the minimum level and the maximum level. As I said, the unit contains two litres of either sterile or distilled water. Um, so you don't need to do anything with the water in the machine. The water needs to be changed at least every six months. And we do have a water change protocol available, which many hospitals use. So if you do want a copy of the water change protocol, then please do contact me um, and uh, we can provide that for you. Um, otherwise, if the device alarms and says error water level, um, then you need to top up um, using either sterile or distilled water. So um, it only takes a litre to go from minimum to maximum. So you don't need a lot, but please make sure that it's either sterile or distilled water and not tap water. So when you're topping it up, there is a circular grate um, on the top of the device between the two sets of connectors. Um, and you leave the grate and the filter in place and you will just pour that water through, um, pour it through the grate and the filter and that is how you will top up. But as I said, you don't need to do that unless it is alarmed and said error water level. So the next thing I'm going to do is to connect in the long blue tubing um, and the cuff. So there are two sets of connectors on the top. The reason why there are two sets of connectors are because it is possible to connect two cuffs at the same time. So certainly we have had um, hospitals in the past who have used one machine in between two patients' beds. So they've had two patients on one machine. Um, but it is also possible to connect two cuffs. So it may be if somebody has um, a mandible fracture and a zygomatic fracture, you could have one, one cuff on the jaw and one on the eye area. Or maybe somebody has had a bilateral knee replacement, so you would actually be able to treat both cuffs at the same time. Um, it can also be very useful for breast surgery patients. Um, so the connectors on the top, there is a right way and a wrong way to connect the long blue tubing. So the connectors have an outer metal collar. So you need to push down on that outer metal collar, place the connector in and release. So push down, place in and release. So this is a better way to connect it rather than jabbing the long blue tubing into the top of the connector. Um, I want to show you what can happen if you do jab the, the long blue tubing in. So sometimes if people have tried to jab the long blue tubing into the connector on the top, it can stick open um, and uh, then not connect properly. So at the moment, this connector thinks that it has long blue tubing connected into it. So if I press start, this would go up like a fountain because the water would be flowing through um, and obviously it would go up like a fountain. So when I'm using a machine and I'm only connecting into one side, I always make sure that the other side, the connectors are down and safe. So um, this one has popped up at the moment and the other one is down and safe. So to make this one safe, you just press down on the outer metal collar and just check that those are down and safe. So um, up like a fountain and down and safe. Okay, so that's just one, one main thing to look out for. Um, over time, they can start to stick. So if that is happening, you can use either Vaseline or WD-40 just to lubricate those points um, and make sure that they stay free moving. 
Um, it also works the same uh, with the connectors on the end of the long blue tubing. So you would just pull down um, and place on. Um, and again, these can start to stick. So just make sure that if you don't have a cuff connected, they are down away from the end of the tubing um, rather than popped up. Otherwise, the water will come out. Um, so the cuff itself is all single patient. So from here, this is all single patient for risk of infection, whereas the long blue tubing is not single patient. It is quite expensive to replace um, and it does need to stay with the machine at all times. So we generally recommend that hospitals label this with do not throw away or something similar. Um, but please do make sure that the long blue tubing stays with the machine. Um, the cuffs are all single patient. We have a very popular rental service where patients can rent a smaller machine to use at home. Um, so we recommend that when a patient is leaving hospital, they take this cuff home with them because it can't be used by anybody else anyway. So please do, when the patient leaves hospital, allow them to take this cuff home with them in case they decide that they want to rent a machine from us. Um, so I'm just going to start the water flow now, obviously checking that they are nice and safe, and then I'm going to start the water flow. So um, in terms of troubleshooting, you want to make sure that the water is travelling all the way around the cuff. Hylotherm works by cooling the water to a specific temperature and then pumping it all the way around the cuff. If the patient tells you that the cuff doesn't feel cool, that the actual temperature is correct and at the nominal temperature, um, the most likely thing is that there is some kind of impingement or disruption to the water flowing all the way around. So you just need to make sure that there isn't any um, strapping or that the patient isn't lying on the cuff to stop the water from flowing all the way around. So one of the ways that I check this is just to feel near the blue input and output tubes just to make sure that both feel inflated. Um, if not, then um, take the cuff off the patient, lay it flat, make sure that the water's traveling all the way around and then very carefully refit it, making sure that um, the straps aren't too tight and that the water is circulating all the way around. Um, if you have a patient who um, needs to go to the toilet or just wants to take a break from using the machine, then you simply stop the water flow, leave everything connected um, if I was to disconnect from here now, a lot of water would come out and obviously it would be very near the patient. So leave everything connected if you can for the whole time that they're in hospital, otherwise you will get leaks. Um, so um, on and off the patient rather than disconnecting anything from the device. Um, when the patient's going home, I recommend that you leave it with the flow stopped but all connected for at least 10 minutes just to allow as much water as possible to drain back into the machine. Um, you will find that there probably will still be some that leaks out at that time, um, but that's certainly a better way to do it and obviously to let them take the cuff home. So disconnecting the cuff, you just want to pull back on that outer metal collar um, so that you can release the cuff. Um, in terms of disconnecting the long blue tubing from the device, you just want to push down on that outer metal collar and that will, will disconnect that for you. Um, another troubleshooting area um, is just um, once you've got everything connected up, if you press start and the water doesn't start to flow, um, then you may want to check whether there is an airlock in the system. Um, so to do that, there's a little de-airing device and you click that in, pull up, so all you're doing is it's like bleeding a radiator. You are just checking whether there is any air in the system. Um, if there is an airlock, you might need to pull that through quite a few times before you start getting water. Um, as I said, you don't need to do it normally. It would only be if you try and start the water flow and no water starts flowing through. And um, it's worth looking out for some of the other videos. So we do have fitting guides for the lower face cuff and also for the knee cuff. So please do look out for those if you are using with either facial surgery patients or knee surgery patients. Um, there should also be laminated sheets in the drawer for you. Um, thank you very much for watching.